Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our Series 11 content. As I said at the beginning of this week as we kicked off into Series 11, what I'm going to do rather than give you one video with every single sample team in, I'm going to split them up and we'll do a sample team by day and that gives us the idea of being able to kind of showcase the teams and talk through them as we go through the episode. So today we're kicking off with Kyoga. Um, it is a very standard Tornoga team but it's one that I used in series 8 and I really do love and when I started practicing a little bit of series 11 um, this is a team I kind of picked up and I had a lot of success with it still so it still functions very well and I think it's I'm confident enough to share it with you in hopes that it is going to be beneficial for you to try out and like I say with the sample teams this week the rental calls will stay up for four weeks from this week so you'll have enough time to to try them out before we'll kind of rotate them out and get some new rental teams up as we go forward so today's team we've got the Kyoga it is going to be Mystic Water it is the item of choice obviously we can now have the option to Dynamax uh, Kyoga which is pretty nice I really like Dynamax and Kyoga a lot of the time the Mystic Water gives you boost there on top of the boost that you already get from the drizzle ability from the rain uh, you've got Water Spout, Origin Pulse and Ice Beam and then you've got Tornadus there it's going to be the main kind of support and member of the team now you tend to see a lot of tornadoes with taunt on them to shut down opposing trick room teams but we've got a good trick room check in itself in Amoongus for the most part we've got ways to kind of slow teams down with incineroar as well we've got enough switching options in the team to allow us to kind of get around trick room if we are in those situations where i feel like rain dance is probably a little bit more beneficial uh, and one of the big changes that i made to the initial team just because we're seeing a lot more inclusions of things like Groudon, um, things like Pivot Pokemon that are going to be playing around. And if you can guarantee that rain on the field when you've got Kyogre out, especially in a Tailwind con condition, you're going to be able to close games down pretty quickly. The Kyogre's EV spread allows you to always get the jump on max speed, uh, Regieleki under Tailwind. So as long as you are... Uh, aware of that uh, you should be all right and you'll have the confidence to kind of click water spout orange and pulse in front of them if you've got the tailwind up cartana with assault vest is incredible it kind of finishes off a nice fire water grass core within this team alongside that incineral um and yeah you've got the options there the coverage leaf blade sacred sword smart strike and then aerialist especially when you go for that um dynamax with the cartana it's a nice option as well uh, you're going to be able to take advantage of a lot of those really beneficial max moves you're going to get the the terrain up if you need it with the leaf blade to boost your own attacks you're also going to be able to boost your own attacks as well as um, really only the Incineroar's with Sacred Sword uh, because you get that attack boost the, the only other physical attacker on the team is Incineroar but um, you're going to be able to get defense boosts that will benefit everything with the Smart Strike and um, Max Steel Spike and then the Aerial Ace is just another form of speed control uh, with those Max Airstreams then you've got the Regieleki there going with a bit more power again with the Life Orb a pretty standard set Max Speed um, but does what it says on the tin you've got Incineroar in this variation it does give you uh, an option for Intimidate it gives you way for fake out disruption slowing things down in that parking shot's a nice way to kind of pivot out and try and get board position back and then the Amoongus as we've mentioned the Cobra Berry there just to kind of mitigate the bigger threat of Max Airstreams allowed to stick around on the field a bit longer and then uh, disrupt with things like Spore Clear Smog's a nice way to get rid of opposing boosts and things like that and then the Rage Powder's quite nice to support a bunch of things on the team especially if you've got Tornadus out and you need to guarantee that Tailwind you can Rage Powder get that up and then get something like Kyogre back on the field so you get the the general idea there's a rental code i'll have a couple of games with the team now and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode so i hope you enjoy this one today friends and without further ado let's get into game one first up today we have paulie t playing a team of arcanine kyoga whimsicott a weavile a tornadus and halucha so we've got a, a, a tornoga kind of core uh, parked in here you've got threats like weavile which you're gonna have fake out triple axle gotta watch out for those you feel like uh cartana is gonna do pretty well in this match uh you've got to watch out for something like tornadus um regieleki gonna be another nice player here as well and the other thing to kind of consider is do we try and keep pace with the tailwind from my opponent's side of the field which we could bring tornadus in uh, as a late game pokemon and try and get rid of something like uh, the Weavile, the Tornadus early game, uh, if we can. So I think what we'll do is lead Cartana Regieleki, and we'll probably bring Tornadus and Kyogre in the back. Do we really need Incineroar or Amoongus in this one? Like Amoongus gives us a bit of a sponge to bring in against the opposing Kyogre, but I think we kind of got that in our own Cartana anyway. We just need to watch out for the Arcanine 
obviously the Intimidate going to slow us down a little bit on Cortana's end of the field. And then the Tornadus as well with that Hurricane that can hit us on the special side of things, which is going to be a little bit threatening. But other than that, Cortana does pretty well in this one. So hopefully Cortana can have a nice easy sweep, which will be, uh, which will be pretty nice. So let's see what my opponent leads with. Whimsicott and Arcanine. We've got to watch out for, obviously, Switcheroo on the... Um, on the Whimsicott as well, which is not always going to be something that's uh, beneficial. And uh, it is actually going to be beat up. Going to be beat up uh, Whimsicott. So that's not <laughs> ideal at all. Um, okay, if they go for the beat up here, you would imagine they're going to have to go for the Tailwind first. We probably need to switch out Cortana. With the Sash, we've got the option where we can potentially bring in Tornadoes, take an attack and get our Tailwind up to match theirs, which is, uh, makes it difficult, of course. It really does make it difficult. The other option is going for something like maybe Electro Web here, but I'm pretty sure that they protect, protect the Arcanine, I think. So let's see. And um, yeah, I haven't seen Justified Arcanine for a little while. Didn't expect that. So caught off guard a little bit. If we just led Tornoga, we would have been in a way better position. But uh, not the case, unfortunately. Let's see if we can get our Regileki off the field. Because I think the big thing that we have to do is try and get a Tailwind up. The big precaution here is obviously, you know, you've got to worry about that Whimsicott. If it does have something like Taunt to shut down a Tornado, it's going to make things pretty difficult for us, of course. So let's see what they go for. Uh, we get the Vault Switch. Are they just going straight for the beat up though? That could be an option here. Um, <laughs> we do get the Vault Switch into the, the Whimsicott, which is useful. Um, <laughs> okay, this is not ideal because now we've got to switch something in. Uh, I mean, Kyogre in, it's going to take a bunch of damage. And if they go for the Max Flare here, that's that's pretty bad for us, which they're likely to do into the Tornadus. Um, but then I guess we could switch Kyogre back out to something like Kyogre if we want this next turn. I can't believe they've just gone straight for the beat up without any sort of tailwind here. Um, let's see where they go for. They're going to get four beat ups off. It's, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it now because the, the, the beat up combination, if you don't suspect it in team preview, which I didn't, I totally overlooked it and that's to my own detriment. But if you lead wrong against it, it can really put you in a bad spot. Now we should have really, in hindsight, electro web there, but I really felt like the Alcanine probably went for a protector while the tailwind was set up. Um, you've got to expect wild charge to come out from this Arcanine the next turn, um, which is what we probably want to protect. Like, we either protect Kyogre or we get something like Cartana on the field um, because we really want to, to be able to get Regieleki Kyogre out on the field after our Tailwind um, so we can Electro Web and then go after the Arcanine with Kyogre and then hopefully clean up from that stage. But it leaves our options pretty limited when we're down to two Pokemon. So these two are going to be able to kind of cut us apart. Um, as a Tailwind, we'll be able to match that. Now it's whether or not... Um, well, it depends where they go with the Arcanine, what they do here, really. Do they go after the Tornado? I think they go after Kyogre with a Max Lightning, yeah. That's the big play here. Cortana is able to take it. Now we will be able to remove the Whimsicott from the field, which is quite nice. Um, and we could probably try for a Hurricane into the Arcanine, I guess. The other option is Max and Tornadoes, but it feels so wasteful if they attack into that slot, you know. Um, let's see where the Wimmy goes. The Wimmy might just Moonblast into... Oh, it's got Dazzle. Well, the Cortana will take this. We'll be able to remove the Wimmy from the field. And then we get that board position with Regieleki Kyogre, which is kind of what we wanted anyway. So this kind of works out well for us. Get rid of that beat-up threat. And we'll see a Max Flare come out from my opponent. I do get a beast boost, but it ain't gonna last long. Okay, so I think the big worry here would be 
you know, something like Fake Out coming in next to the Arcanine. I can't believe I didn't see the Justified coming into Team Preview. So blind. Blindsided by everything. Okay, well, we'll get Reggie Alecki in. They've got one more turn of their max turns left. We'll see if we can turn this round. Tornado's coming in. That's not actually too bad, to be honest, because we can Electro Web and then we can Max, or we can Electro Web and then we can Water Spout. Um, but yeah, Kyogre likes to be both. It's just wet. Oh, okay. Uh, it's the extreme speed that worries me a little bit. Extreme speed definitely worries me. Uh, but I think we Electro Web. We Electro Web nonetheless. And we go. I think we have to max Kyogre here. And we'll go after the Arcanine. We need to get rid of that threat. Now they do have the Tailwind up. Extreme speed, if they've got it, is going to be a little bit annoying to deal with. Especially if it's into the Aleki. But again, <coughs> if they go after the Aleki, it does leave Tony, uh, Kyogre kind of free. So... We'll see. We have to go Electro Web here. We can't afford to take um, a wild charge from the Arcanine, especially with the beat up boosts and especially with uh, the terrain up as well. Scary face. Okay, they go into the Kyogre, which is not ideal. Oh, that's really not ideal. It's not ideal at all. <laughs> Scary face is the thing that we didn't want to see. Uh, we do get rid of the Tornadus. I don't believe we're going to be able to outspeed the Arcanine now, and I don't think we're going to be able to take a wild charge full beat up mode um, no the recall will probably take down the Arcanine so it's Regieleki against whatever comes in oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear um, that is down is it if it's a Kyogre that comes in we're fine we will kill we'll knock out the Kyogre because we've got the electric terrain up yeah so unless the Kyogre is scarfed it may well be. Um, how many turns of Tailwind have we got left? If it's Scarfed. I mean, even if it's Scarfed, we're alright. We're alright. Because it can't outspeed us when we're Scarfed. It's just if it's Sashed. That would be the only thing. Yeah, we'll just Thunderbolt and win. So we're alright. Whew, that was so close. That was so close. What a game to kick us off with today. <laughs> when I saw that lead and I was like, there's no Intimidate, I literally thought, okay. We're taking the L. We're taking the L to kick us off today. But um, remember, and right at the last minute, that uh, our opponent had Kyogre as a restricted. Give me a little bit of hope that uh, things are going to be all right. So there we go. We pick up a win, eke it out, and we'll move on to game two of today's episode, friends. Okay, next up, we have a Venusaur, a Landorus Theory, and we have a Grim Snarl, Charizard, Tokol, and Zashian team. So pretty standard looking Zashian team with Sun. Uh, it's pretty scary, especially when it, we've got to consider that we've got like our rain mode and Venusaur threatens us pretty heavily in this one. But I think what we'll do is we'll lead Tornadus. I think we'll lead Kyogre. We'll bring Venusaur, uh, Incineroar on the back. And then I think we'll round off with Aleki as well. Because Aleki gives us nice options for speed control outside of when Tornadus is inevitably going to be taken down. Gives us nice options to slow the things like the Zashian down, things like uh, the Charizard. We can hit that for good damage, as well as the uh, the Torkoal. That could... There's an argument that Cartana could be good as well against something like Venusaur, but the problem is, like, Venusaur's got Earth Power, it's got Weather Ball, it's got things that can hit Cartana for pretty good damage. So we do need to watch out for that. Um, okay. I'm kind of tempted, and like in all honesty, I'm very tempted to max Tornadus and just go max Airstream into um, into the Venusaur. Because there's a chance that if the, the Grimmsnarl stays in, it goes for screens. But it could switch out as well to something like Torkoal. Um, so I'm kind of tempted just to max. Go for the max Airstream. Hope for the best, <clears throat> and uh, hope that we see Venus on Max and go for like Vine Lash into something like Incineroar. That'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be good. Especially if we see the uh, Grimmsnarl switch out here, yeah, but we're not going to see that. We're going to see screen support come up. Now the big worry, of course, is going to be um, weakness policy on this Venusaur, especially when it's paired with something like um, Grimmsnarl with that screen support to just give it that additional buff straight off uh, the bat turn one. So let's see. 
what my opponent does. They are Max and the Venusaur, so we're both pulling the trigger at the same time. Venusaur, the only thing that he can say is it's going to struggle to uh, to get damage onto the Tornado, so we have that going for us. We've got to worry about Spirit Break and things like that, but we do have an active fake out the next turn if we want that. Um, we could potentially potentially get a pawning shot off with Incineroar if we're, if we're cheeky enough to. So they get the, uh, the Thunder Wave there. Uh, we've got to watch out for that the next turn from that Grim Snarl, but we do get an airstream, and we really do disrupt and put that Venusaur in a really tight spot, especially with an active fake out to stop that Thunder Wave the next turn on that Grim Snarl. Um, we do see the Vine Lash come out, it's going to be into Incineroar. Take that pretty well though. And residual damage, not going to be great, but we do see a life orb on that Venusaur, so we know the item there, it's not Corba Berry or anything. Well, we would have known it was Cobra Berry before the Life Orb anyway, wouldn't we? So, uh, like I say, we've got a nice option where we can go for the Airstream now into the Venusaur. The only issue would be if we see the Venusaur Max Guard. Um, so there is the, the argument here where I, I potentially would like to call the Max Guard on the Venusaur. And we go Max Airstream and Fake Out into the Grim Snarl here. Because I think if they Max Guard... Yeah, they're going to try and get the, the Thunder Wave off this turn, but we can kind of mitigate them getting the Thunder Wave off the next turn by at least getting another speed boost. So at least we'll be the same speed. And we also get some nice uh, damage onto the Grim Snarl as well. We don't waste the max turn. And we potentially, uh, if we still outspeed the Venusaur going into this next turn, instead we're going to be able to get that parting shot off to give us that little bit of positional support as well. Um, so yeah, you've got to you've got to you've got to expect the thunder wave into uh, tornadoes here, and um, more parting shot. Uh, did we part? Yeah, I think we have to parting shot. Yeah, I think we go double up into the Venusaur just in case, like the worst case scenario where we get fully paralyzed. But Touchwood, we don't. Um, and if the Venusaur goes down like we expect it should do, uh, then we'll get the parting shot off. Um, into the Grim Snarl anyway, so that's good, and we can preserve this fake out for later on in the game, as well as the um, as well as the Intimidate, which we need for the Zashian, because that's going to be a little bit obnoxious to deal with. Yeah, we do get the Airstream; we're not paralyzed, so that's perfect. Um, get rid of that Venusaur before it can do anything. We're really just trying to limit what that Venusaur can do to our team. Uh, so in these situations, you know, you're not normally pressing the Dynamax button with the Tornadoes, but there are certain occasions where it can prove pretty pretty useful. Um, and there's a parting shot into the Grim Snarl. So like I say, we keep that in Intimidate in the back, uh, which is, which is going to be quite important. And I think what we'll do is we'll bring in Reggie Alecki at this point. We can't be Thunder Waved. <coughs> um... And also, it's got life orb, so we don't really worry too much about that residual chip that we're taking because we're going to be taking chip anyway, so it's not like we've got a sash or anything there. So, max turns are over. We deal with the Venusaur pretty well. What have we got left? So, we do have Tailwind at our disposal that we'll be able to utilize as well. So, Torko coming in. Yeah, I think what we could potentially do is just go for a Volt Switch into Grim Snarl. The Volt Switch Grim Snarl. Uh, Mm. Oh no, we, I think we Volt Switch. I think we, we Tailwind. And then we Volt Switch into Torkoal here. Just to get damage onto it, just to weaken the potential eruption. That's what I'm more concerned about. You know, the eruption coming out and doing bolt load damage. Yeah, we do see the, 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 ref, the light screen come out from the Grim Snarl, which is fine. But we'll be able to pivot into to auger here just to weaken that that big damage from the uh the talk roll although we are seeing a citrus berry come out. that's still kind of all right um and we got decent switches to kind of protect our kyoga this next turn where we can go back into something like regieleki or incineral if we want that are both going to be immune to that that um thunder wave threat from the uh, the Grim Snarl and then we can just hurricane that slot this next turn get rid of it so we do see a body press come out which is not ideal uh, there's a bit more damage than what we were hoping for but it's still not too bad and we can potentially just keep 
Mm, no, we don't want to keep Kyogre out on the field at the minute. Like I say, we want to probably switch to something like uh, Aleki. Do we want to switch to Aleki? How many turns of residual damage we got left? Is that it? That's it. Okay. So, what we'll do is we'll go with the same plan. Yeah, we'll hurricane. And we'll switch in. Um, yeah, I think we switch in Aleki. Because I just feel like Incineroar is going to be more useful to keep as an end game. And I think both. They've both got, you know, both warranted that they're going to be both useful to keep. But as long as we can get rid of the Grim Snarl here, that's fine. We might see a Thunder Wave, which I expect we will. As the Zashin comes onto the field, yeah, and then the Hurricane should be enough to take down this Grim Snarl from this range, even behind the light screen. Which is, yeah, this is exactly what we want. And I think we can just Electro Web and Rain Dance this next turn if we want, and that kind of clears the field for then Kyogre and Incineroar to kind of come on, and then we've got the active Fake Out and Origin Pulse, which should be enough to kind of clean things up from that point. Or hopefully it will be. Um, or, or we rain dance and we roll switch. <sighs> Just a worry about a protect on Torkoal. Like, are you going to protect Torkoal? Potentially, probably not. To be honest, but getting the speed drop is also going to be very useful as well. Yeah, I think I think what we'll do is we'll we'll electro web. Tornado is paralyzed, so that's not ideal. Yeah, we get some nice damage there, so that's good. That kind of sets Kyogre to, up to come in, especially with Incineroar support. Even if we lose both Pokemon here, we're in a good spot. Sacred Sword coming out, we'll take down Aleki, and then probably a body press here into Tornadus, I'd imagine. Then in Jealousy, we may take this, I don't know. Yeah, we do. Okay, so that's alright. Um, yeah, I think we're bringing Kyogre now. And then we got the Origin Pulse in Rain Dance, but we don't need necessarily need the Rain Dance here. Whereas we could just switch to Incineroar with Tornadus, get the Intimidate, go for Origin Pulse, and then that should be that should be that that should be that. And then we got the we got the Tailwind in the back to kind of come back in if we need to, uh, where we could then cycle the Intimidate again if that makes sense. So we'll switch Tornadus out. Get that intimidate onto the field. We set that intrepid sword boost that the Zashin's got under its belt at the minute, um, and Kyogre should be in uh, a well. We should be able to pick up the knockout. We do see protect from Torkoal, of all things, um, and the Origin Pulse come out into that protect, and it does make contact with the Zashin, which is always good to see. Oh, but behind the light screen, not enough, unfortunately. Yeah, um, but the Sacred Sword, not enough either. Tailwind does pit her out, but we do have access to um, the Fake Out this turn, where we can just go Fake Out and then Origin Pulse again. But we may say the Zashin just protects here. Uh, so we may need to maneuver our board a little bit going into these next few turns where we'll have to probably switch Incineroar out um, into Tornadus uh, and then try and get Tailwind up again before we can kind of close this game out but like I say by doing that it does allow us to kind of pivot out with our Intimidate to bring it back in again to weaken that Zash in a little bit further which is always going to be useful so we could be really cheeky here and protect <laughs> and parting shock but I don't think it's worth it. And if they do target into the Incineroar here with the Sacred Sword, it's not the end of the world because um, we just get a free switch back into our Intimidate and it means they haven't like subbed or anything like that this turn, which is always going to be a good thing for us to close the game up against Zashin. We do see the Sacred Sword into that slot and uh, they have predicted correctly. But again, your minus one as well, speed. And you've got to think as well, Thing is, the uh, the rain is ticking down. Hmm. Kyogre depends on the speed of the Zashin, to be honest. Like, how fast is Zashin? I'm gonna outspeed it at minus one. So, 
I can expect to protect here, but we gotta go for this anyway. It's not over, it's not over till the fat lady sings. Is that PC? Are we allowed to say that still? It's an old fashioned saying, so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Right. I think we just have to flare blitz now. How many turns of the, the rain have we got left, you know? Uh, yeah, we've got one turn left. I mean, we flare blitz. We flare blitz an origin pulse. We don't mess around here. We could protect Kyogre and parting shot, but I mean, yeah, we outspeed anyway, so that's kind of all right. That's fine. So that minus one coming in really useful. And the Origin Pulse single target. Going to be enough. And Origin Pulse on point as we do pick up another win to this. That last one, pretty hard. Uh, but a nice, again, another nice example of the team being able to kind of uh, function well against uh, a pretty good meta team. I would say. So what we'll do now, friends, is we'll wrap up with the rental code uh, before we say goodbye for today's episode. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. It is a standard Torn Ogre team, but it is, like I've said at the very beginning and throughout this episode, a lot of fun. And I do feel like it's an effective team as well. So if you do want to try the team out for yourself, uh, be my guest. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. And uh, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Like I've said, this week is all about getting you sample teams to try out. Uh, on the ladder get you started in series 11 and give you a helping hand try out some different um, bigger meta restricted Pokemon that are going to be used and uh, get yourself familiarized with those going deeper into this format so um, stick around because tomorrow we will be doing Shadow Rider Calyrex that will be our next restricted so that will be Thursday tomorrow and um, obviously we will be and we've got two more days of, of sample teams before we move into a bit more fun things next week. Um, so uh, do stick around. Check that one out tomorrow. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. So thanks again for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves more importantly than anything else. And I'll catch you all for the next episode. So until then, bye-bye.